these are images the Sudanese government does not want you to see. Teams of soldiers and secret agents chasing down protesters in the streets of the capital, Khartoum. Bagging them over the head, beating them, and dragging them off to secret detention centers, where they are held without charge and in some cases, tortured. Sudanese activists fear these hit squads. In this film, we'll show you who they are, how they operate, and what happens inside the walls of buildings like this. Sudan's uprising began in December 2018. At first, people were protesting a hike in fuel and food prices. But the demonstrations quickly turned into a revolt against the President Omar al-Bashir. Crowds chanted slogans from the Arab Spring Revolutions of 2011. The government has responded with violence. Security forces have used live ammunition. According to human rights groups, they have killed more than 50 of their own citizens. But they're not just dispersing protests. Sudanese activists have recorded dozens of videos that show the abduction of individual dissidents. We have now analyzed more than 200 videos from the uprising. In order to protect the people who filmed them, we cannot share the exact locations at which they were recorded. But we can use them to show you the hit squads in action. This is what they look like. Teams of around six men in white Toyota pickup trucks, sometimes with the number plates removed or covered up. Some are in military uniform, others in plain clothes. Many are wearing masks and carrying weapons, from automatic rifles to crude lengths of plastic pipe used to beat protesters. So who are these mass plainclothes agents? Sudanese activists describe them as low-ranking thugs in the pay of the National Intelligence and Security Services, or NISS. This video doesn't look like much, but it's important because it corroborates that view. We see soldiers in military fatigues, policemen in blue uniforms, and plainclothes agents all working together. The clip also captures six of the white pickup trucks and a building that is easily identified, the Kalakla police station in the south of Khartoum. This evidence, in combination with the footage of these men in action and the testimony of Sudanese activists, points towards the obvious conclusion. The plainclothes agents are part of the government's security forces. These squads have been deployed since December to clear demonstrators from the streets. Here's an example of one crew in action. Filmed by a group of demonstrators who kept their phone recording even as they came under fire. The agents are working around this block, clearing away protesters. Notice the plainclothes agent at the front and the man in red in the back. Around the same time, just around the corner, someone else captured the same team in action. Here's the man in red and here's what looks like the same lead agent 
firing at protesters. But this is not just crowd control. These crews target one person on the streets or at home. The victims are beaten, dragged into the car, and disappear. We do not know where all these people end up, but some of them at least are brought to a secret holding facility here just south of Asia Hospital. How do we know this? On January 11th, this photo was posted to social media. The post claims that the street contains a detention center run by state security. Since the 1990s, local activists have called these places ghost houses because people disappear behind their walls and because when detainees are tortured, you can hear the screams. We confirmed that the photo was taken here. A second activist told us about a detention center in the same neighborhood. When we asked him to show us the exact location, he sent us this screenshot, which also places the ghost house just south of Asia Hospital. The same source took these photos which can be located precisely. We have since spoken with eight different witnesses who said they were detained in a building close to Asia Hospital. Five of these witnesses said that protesters were beaten so badly that they could no longer walk. Some told us that people's hands were broken as they attempted to fend off the blows and that the floor was covered in blood. But the Asia Hospital Ghost House is not their final destination. Two sources told us that this is just a holding facility where detainees are interrogated and sorted. Many activists deemed a threat to the regime are transferred to a larger detention center here, just north of Khartoum's Shandi bus terminal. We have no photos of this place. One witness told us that you cannot get anywhere near this block with a phone or a camera. But we spoke to seven former detainees and asked them if they knew exactly where they'd been taken. Using their phones, they marked up screenshots, identifying a row of four buildings as a torture center run by Sudanese security. One of our sources added a crucial detail, an arrow pointing to the fridge. Activists said that the fridge is a series of chilled holding cells in which the cold is used as an instrument of torture, an instrument that leaves no marks on the body. It is freezing inside. It becomes unbearable after 15 minutes, but I was put in there for a whole night and a few more hours the next day. We also spoke with the second person who had been detained here. I was so scared, scared of dying. The place is cold and lonely. I thought those were my last moments alive. They've beaten me so badly, I thought it was it. I've never felt cold like that. If I had stayed there until the morning, I would have died. The torture, the beating, they were better than staying in that place. The fridge is not new. We spoke with one dissident who was held in a cold cell as far back as 2009. Activists who have been detained here also describe being beaten, sleep deprived and held in stress positions. We put these allegations to the Sudanese authorities. A government spokesperson denied the existence of secret detention centers and told us that nobody in the security services had ever heard about the fridge. He said that Sudanese law prohibits the beating or torture of detainees, 
and that police are forbidden from pursuing protesters into narrow streets or into their homes. He said the protests had not been approved and were therefore illegal. He also claimed the protesters were not peaceful, that some had used firearms and that the police had to defend themselves. On January 29th, Sudan security chief Salah Ghosh ordered the release of all detainees held during the recent protests. Some detainees, including people we are in touch with, have been released since then. But many remain in detention and other demonstrators are still being targeted. A week after Ghosh's announcement, protesters were back on the streets of Khartoum calling for freedom. This man raised the Sudanese flag. He was still holding it, even as he was hauled away.